All right, hey everybody, happy Friday. I know that we just had Friday class and you probably weren't expecting it like, okay, wait, Friday class, which is the group quiz yesterday. Stuff got a little harder, right? Got a little harder and again, we're loading up on information because you don't know how to do anything yet. <laughs> we gotta figure out uh, how to do it, right? How to do it and with that requires kind of like laying stuff out there. So anyways, you're watching this video um, just to make your life a little bit easier with the homework this weekend. Basically, you have two kinds of problems in homework this weekend. You have all the class, not all the classroom exercises. You have the first 10 classroom exercises, 10 or 11, I'm not sure. Um, and then you have the first six written exercises. So for the classroom exercises, what you're going to do is that you're going to use page 17 Right? They say justify each statement with a property from algebra or a property of congruence. Page 17 has got that. So if I look at page 17 here, this is what we're talking about. All of your answers are either going to be one of these eight properties of equality or these three properties of congruence. Now, I didn't really exactly talk about the properties of congruence explicitly today, but they're the same three that are also part of the last three for equality. The reflexive property of congruence the symmetric property viewers and the transit property viewers. So I'm gonna talk about that in this video here. Quickly fill out the answers there, the first six out of the 10 or 11 that you have. Um, then for the written exercises, um, here you might be wondering how to do this. I went through an example of this in sixth block today, um, but we ran out of time for seventh block here. So um, if it's confusing for you, then you'll understand when we do the Jamboard. Um, if not, just like try, try to watch this here and I think you'll kind of get it here. So what you're doing on these problems one through six right here, um, you can see an example on how to do these problems by looking at example one on page 17, this one right here, okay? So let's do a few of these together right now. That's why you're watching this video. You want to feel like you're a little bit ahead of things before we do the jam board on Monday. Okay, classroom exercises. Justify each statement with a property from algebra or a property of congruence, okay? So guys, there was just a lot. There is a lot, right? There is in class. There were eight properties of algebra, three properties of congruence, which we didn't even really talk about here. Um, what you're going to want to do eventually, and you're not there yet, you want to do very quickly realize a statement is being made here, okay? A statement is being made here. And you want to justify why you know that statement is true, right? Why that statement is true. So here, this is a statement here that a measure of a given angle, measure of an angle B, why do we know that an, a measure of an angle must be equal to itself? Okay, must be zero. Why is that evident? Like, what's, what's there a reason for that here? Because we will actually eventually have to do this when we're proving more complex things about different shapes. We will have to say that, hey, this measure is equal to itself. Okay, equal to itself. Okay, something being equal to itself is reflexive. That's it, reflexive here. That's the thing I want to get your attention to, and it's just going to require practice to get there that this is the reflexive property here, that anything is equal to itself. Now, here you need to make a decision. Is this the reflexive property of equality? Okay, so we have eight properties of equality here. Or is it the reflexive property of congruence being said right here? Okay, if you said that it's the reflexive property of equality, you would be right. And that's actually kind of hard here. The reflexive property of equality. Okay, any number is equal to itself. What is measure of angle B? Is that a shape or is that a number? Measure of angle B is a shape, okay? It's a, a, we know that the measures of an angle is anywhere, sorry, measure of angle B is a number, right? Is a number. We know that the measure of a given angle is anywhere from larger than zero all the way up to 180, okay? So this one is the reflexive property of quality would justify the statement being made. State number two, where you see after the if, that's sort of a given statement, a given premise. If we happen to know that a segment were congruent to another segment. Ooh, wait, we have we see segment CD again here. So to notice this here, I notice that I have one thing that's congruent to a second thing, okay? Segment AB is congruent to segment CD. And here I notice that that second thing, segment CD, is congruent to segment EF. That second thing is congruent to a third thing. Um, why would I know that the first and third thing are equal to each other? And we maybe went too, a little too fast in the class today. So the reason why this one here, this is this is one here, so maybe studying this here, maybe trying to get this here, we're gonna practice this a little bit uh, to next week. 
Um, this is the transitive property right here. One thing is congruent to a second thing. A, that second thing is congruent to a third thing. Therefore, the first and third things need to be congruent to each other as well. So um, this is sort of simplified to you. It was simplified to you in the video by saying, if two things are each congruent to the same thing, they are congruent to each other. That is the transitive property. And so this might be way too hard for you guys here. I'm kind of thinking right now. Um, so we'll write down transitive property here. Um, if I could actually type that here. Oh, we can. Yeah. This one's the transitive property. Transitive property of congruence. Okay, so this is actually of congruence right here because um, uh, transitive is true for equality for numbers. One number is equal to a second number, and then that second number is equal to a third number. The first and third numbers must be equal to each other or expressions, right? If two fourths is equal to four eighths, and four eighths is equal to uh, six twenty fourths, then two fourths is equal to six twenty fourths. All right, anyways, transitive. We're just gonna get used to this over time. You don't even feel like you got this totally right away. Okay, here, this is another statement here. If a uh, number, then here, numbers, right? If we don't see a little symbol on top indicating it's a shape um, for the two letters together, that means a length, right? A distance, which is a number. So if one number is equal to another number, then we're allowed to flip it to say, right? If, if here, if this length is equal to that length and that length is equal to the original length, which one is that one here? Well, this is called the symmetric property, okay? The symmetric property. So this is basically, I want to get it out there because we need to start practicing these and we'll practice a little bit more. It's the symmetric property. Is this of equality or of congruence? It's of equality, of equality here, okay? Um, all right, let's keep going here. Boom. This guy right here, okay? This guy right here. Um, hmm. I might pare back your homework a little bit. Should I? I don't know. <laughs> this one right here, all right, it's gonna be painful. It's painful getting started with this stuff here, but it gets a lot more interesting, I think, down the line. Um, this one here, I uh, would, would question myself here. If I'm given this, if I have this right here, why do I know that x is 11? Well, what do I do to both sides of the equation here? I'd have to subtract five here and subtract five here. The reason why I know that x is 11 in this instance is that I have this equation x plus five equals 16. If I take away five from the left side, I can take away five from the right side, take away the same thing from both sides, I would get x equals 11, okay? Why do I know that's true? That's the subtraction property of equality, okay? Subtraction property of equality. So you gotta think, how is my equation changing, okay? And why I can justify uh, that it changed, okay? And well, we just took away five from both sides. Why am I allowed to do that? Well. If I take away the same thing from both sides, my equation remains balanced. That is the subtraction property equality. You need to actually name that reason here, okay? Number five, um, we have if five y equals negative 20, then y equals four, okay? Started with this, five y equals, equals negative 20. Your teacher just gives that to you, okay? It's you to solve, five y equals negative 20. How are you gonna solve it? What do you do to both sides? I'm gonna divide both sides by five, okay? Right, that's how I can justify why y equals negative four, okay? It's a rule, right? The division property of equality is this one right here. Division property of equality. Okay. This one right here, if I have uh, Z over five is equal to 10, why would I know that Z has to equal 50? How can I justify it? Okay. Here, right, this isn't one of these pesky ones down there that reflects. I'm not saying something's equal to itself, right? We're not saying that one thing is equal to another thing, and then it's just switching sides. That's the symmetric property. We're not saying two things, one and three, that are each equal to the same thing or equal to each other. That's transitive. That's going to take us some practice to kind of get. Okay, what happened here? We started with if z over 5 equals 10, and then, right, we multiply both sides by 5. That's how we could justify why z would have to equal 50. Well, z over 5 equals 10. How do I solve for z? If we're dividing by 5, what's the opposite of dividing by 5? multiplying by five. But if I multiply one side by five, I need to multiply the other side by five to keep my equation balanced, okay? And that is called the multiplication property of equality. Multiplication property of equality. Multiplication property of equality. Okay, there's number one through six. Okay, this is the second thing you're doing for homework here, okay? So as I said, really only a couple minutes each one. 
Uh, if you kind of know how, how these work, um, only a, a couple minutes each one here. So you're gonna justify each step of these ones. And what I say here is see example one at page 17. I went through this with six block, uh, but ran out of time seven block here. So let's take a look um, at maybe what seventh block didn't see. I'm gonna hit play here, okay? Um, seventh block, I said distributed property. That's another thing here too to be aware of. That's another property. It's not a property of equality technically. It's a property of multiplication over division, uh, over addition. Um, but uh, yeah, they mentioned it down here. So that'll come up in your problem set a little bit, uh, that how your equation changes. You want to get used to how things are changing and justify why things are changing. So anyways, I'm going to hit play on this. Turn the volume off here. I'm going to leave that here. Um, uh, and this is kind of how what you're going to do for these problems here. Okay? It's going to tell you, okay, solve 3x equals 6x, uh, sorry, Solve three X equals six minus a half X and justify each step. Um, so the problems are already gonna be solved for you. That's why this is kind of confusing. And this is why I wanted to get to this in, in, uh, in seventh block, but I, well, we didn't get there. This is already solved. We just need to figure out the reasons, right? The reasons, okay? And we talked about reasons today. This will make sense in time. We just need to practice, okay? This very first equation that's given to you, pretend that's the equation that was given to you. That's the beginning of the problem. Remember, we come into math class, we have an equation to solve. Why? Well, your teacher said it was true. The textbook says it was true. So here, 4x minus 5 equals negative 2. What are the steps? How can I justify each step? And what you're using on this one here are same, the same thing. This is from page 17, okay? Page 17 right here. Um, we want to justify with a property of equality on these ones here, okay? So your example is this one here. They started with this equation right here. That's your given equation. Now we're going to state reasons that justify why this equation is allowed to change. So if we look at here, step one, okay, we have 3x equals 6 minus a half x. So if we know that's true, since it's our given equation, what happened from step one to get us to step two, right? If I know 3x equals 6 minus a half x, okay, I know that's true. Why would I know that 6x would have to equal 12 minus x? How did the equation change? What do you notice here? Well, did we add 3x to both sides? No, it doesn't, we didn't. Like, I don't have two and a half x's here or whatever. Um, it looks like, so if we didn't add 3x's to both sides, how did 3x change to 6x? Oh, we multiplied 3x by 2. Do we multiply this side by two? Well, yeah, six times two is 12. Negative half X times two is X. Okay, so the reason justifying this to get to this next step is what? It's gonna show it to us in a second. Multiplication property of equality, okay? Why I had this, I multiply the left side by two. I multiply the right side by two. That's why I know that this next equation is true, okay? If you were to solve this, right, obviously you haven't gotten there. You haven't gotten there to what exactly X is. So here, you might do that next. What justifies that? What did you do? How did you change equation number two um, to start getting down to, to be a little bit closer to find or figure out what X is? What did you do? Well, we got rid of that negative X. How do we get rid of that negative X? What are we doing? What are we doing to both sides of the equation? Okay, we're adding X to both sides of the equation. Negative X plus X would eliminate the negative x here. And then I add x to one side of the equation. If I add it to the other side of the equation, my equation remains balanced. So that is the addition property of equality. Boom. Show it there. Addition property of equality. Okay. Next up. Okay. Next up. Here, to solve this. So here, I got 7x equals 12. What am I doing to solve it? How do I isolate x? What am I supposed to do? Okay. 7x equals 12. I want to figure out what x has got to equal. Okay. I divide both sides by x. Remember, from algebra one, solving is doing the opposite of what's in front of you. Seven times by X equals 12. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division, okay? We're just dividing both sides by seven. We don't see it, but we'll put it there, okay? And that's gonna be the division property of equality, okay? Let's bring it back here, okay? I'm gonna go back here and um, we're going to come up with the answers to this real quick here, okay? Justify each step, okay? First things first, Right? The first thing is a given equation. You have an equation, okay? These are all given equations at the beginning. 
given equation. I'm a stylist, so it's hard to write here, okay? So let's look at this. Let's look at the first one here. Justify each step. Well, what happened, right, as I, as I change this around, okay, I, it looks like I got rid of that negative 5. How did I get rid of that negative 5? Well, I added 5 to both sides. Okay, I added 5 to both sides. Okay, so what's my reason here? What's my reason here? Adding one, adding the same thing to both sides of an equation preserves equality. This is the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality. Okay, and I'll abbreviate it like that. Addition property of equality. Well, I added the same thing to both sides. That's why none of that 4x has, equals to 3 has to be true. Okay, 4x equals to 3. Okay, so now we want to figure out what x has got to equal. What are we doing to both sides? Well, we're dividing both sides by 4. Okay, divide by 4. Okay, why are we allowed to divide both sides by 4? Well, we have a property for that. What's it called? It's called the division property of equality. Okay, there it is. There's your three justifications for the step. We started with a given equation. We added the same thing to both sides. That's the addition property of equality. And then we divided both sides by 4. That's the division property of equality. Okay, let's look at number 2 real quick here. We start with this given equation. How did my equation change? Well, it looks like I no longer have that 2 in the denominator. So what must have happened to both sides to get rid of that 2? Okay? We can justify that we know that 3a equals 12 over 5 because, right, we can multiply both sides by 2. Okay? If I multiply both sides by 2, that's going to get rid of my 2 down there. And I'll have 3a multiply that side by 2. I'd have 12 over 5, which we do down here. So what's my reason that justifies this? Okay, multiplication property of equality. So this is the multiplication problem of equality. Okay, next thing, what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get my answer. Uh, 12 divided by 3 would be 4, so that's here. So right, I'm dividing that by 3 also. Okay, it looks a little messy there. So what's my reason? What justifies that third step right there? The division property of equality. Okay, so there's are the first two done for you. Email me if you have any questions. Okay, we're not going to be doing this forever, right? We just need to get kind of the hang of things here so that we can actually start looking at some shapes, improving some things about shapes. Okay, so this might be the, ver the first scary day that you're really having in geometry, but we're going to get through it. Okay, and hopefully this, this video made some sense and you feel like you kind of get it, but you'll get it on the Jamboard on Monday. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye.